Welcome to the New York State Seelable Biliteracy Guidance Toolkit. The modules in this toolkit represent a collaboration between NYSED and the Mid-State and Midwest Arborns to support schools in beginning the process of implementation. The modules are designed as a self-guiding process for individual schools or those who wish to work together in a consortium. They can be viewed in a sequence or individually to brush up on a particular topic. Each module consists of an agenda, a PowerPoint, and various supporting documentation and exemplars. Schools are encouraged to use these documents for their promotional materials, as well as for internal and external communications. The entire toolkit is available online on the OBEWL website. My name is Candace Black, and I will be your guide for this module. Module 7, Wrapping Up Your SEAL Program, continues the conversation around how the SEAL can be celebrated at schools and then reviews the SEAL criteria in an interactive challenge. We'll move on to present the Biliteracy Pathway Award, which can be given at lower grade levels to encourage students to pursue further world language study. Finally, we will ask participants to reflect on their module experience. For more information on starting a SEAL of Biliteracy program at your school or for any questions regarding the SEAL, please contact me at candace.black at nysid.gov. Let's start with the module objectives. By the end of this module, participants will be able to do the following. Share how, when, and where the SEAL candidates will be celebrated. Identify the resources, tasks, and staff necessary for this celebration. Test their knowledge of the criteria to earn the SEAL to determine if students in various scenarios have qualified for this award. Explain what the Biliteracy Pathway Award is, in which grade levels schools can offer it, and give an example of a task a student can complete to qualify for this award, and give feedback on their participation in this toolkit program and how it might be improved upon in the future. Let's review the homework for Module 6. Did your Seal of Biliteracy Committee accomplish the following? Develop a draft of your certificate. Identify the staff member who puts the notation on the graduation program. Identify the staff member who puts the notation on transcripts. Identify the staff member who is responsible for reporting graduation measures, including the seal, to the state over the summer. And identify when and where you will celebrate seal candidates. Share your plans to celebrate the students who will earn the SEAL. Include any decisions you have made about the following. Events and stakeholders, publicity and media, and awards and regalia. In order to give participants time to share this information, please stop the recording. The End of Year Data Form Challenge. Before starting this challenge, the presenter or coordinator should make sure to print out a challenge handout for each participant, as well as to make sure that they have a laptop or device, as well as the challenge spreadsheet, which is an Excel file. Participants can work individually or in teams of two. The presenter or coordinator should also print out the answer key and explanations to help guide the group through the correct answers. Let's take the end of year data form challenge. This activity is designed to test your knowledge of the requirements for the seal of biliteracy and help you practice with the end of your data form. Remember this form is the one submitted to OBEWL as an Excel spreadsheet with each student's information and how they earned the seal. You will be presented with a variety of scenarios and you will determine if each student has met the requirements to earn the seal by filling out the challenge form. Be careful, while all of the information presented in the situations is accurate, not all information is relevant or will earn the student a point towards the SEAL. You may wish to have the SEAL handbook open to the criteria page, either electronically or in print, in case you need to check some information. After you've decided upon your answers, we'll get together as a large group to discuss. On this slide, you will see screenshots of the various criteria from the end of your data form rotated for your convenience. On the left are the criteria for English proficiency. Let's review these first. 1A, 
students score 80% or better on the ELA exam or else score 75% or better on two Regents exams other than English, not in translation. 1B, L's earn an overall score of 290 or better on the NISASLOT exam. 1C, students earn an average of 85% or better in 11th and 12th grade ELA courses. 1D, students score three or better on the AP English Language or the AP English Literature exam, or L's score 80% or better on the test of English as a foreign language. 1E, Students develop and present a culminating project in English, demonstrating at least intermediate high proficiency. Note that 1E is worth two points, while all other criteria for English are worth one. You will enter a single X in each criterion that the student met. As you enter these X's, the Excel spreadsheet has gray columns that calculate both the raw points earned and whether the English criteria has been met. On the right are the criteria for world language proficiency. Let's review these as well. 2A, students earn an average of 85% or better in a Checkpoint C world language course. Remember that unlike the ELA course criterion, the world language course can be a one-year course or a two-year course sequence. 2B, students provide a transcript from a school in a country outside of the US showing at least three years of instruction in the student's home or native language in grade eight or beyond with an equivalent grade average of B or higher. 2C, students complete all required home language arts, HLA coursework in a bilingual education program. 2D, students score at a proficient level on an accredited Checkpoint C world language assessment. Note that for clarity, we have included each approved assessment in its own column on the end of your data form. 2E, develop and present a culminating project in world languages, demonstrating at least intermediate high proficiency. In the same way that criterion 1E is worth two points while all the other English criteria are a single point in world languages, 2E is also worth two points, while all other criteria are worth a single point. You will enter a single X in each criterion that the student met. As you enter these X's, the Excel spreadsheet has gray columns that calculate both the raw points earned and whether the world languages criteria has been met. And now for the challenge. Take out your laptop or device, work individually or with a partner, read each of the scenarios given on the handout. You can do as many as you wish or as time permits. Regardless of how many you do, the answers will be provided to you. Fill out the challenge spreadsheet on Excel based on the scenarios given and determine if each student earned the seal or not. For each student that didn't earn the seal, indicate why on the handout. Be ready to justify your answers. There are also some follow-up questions for most scenarios to test your knowledge even further. As we've seen, the Seal of Biliteracy is an award that is regulated by state guidelines, including annual reporting requirements. The Biliteracy Pathway Award is a separate recognition for younger students, pre-K through 11th graders, to encourage them to continue the study of English and one or more world languages. The Biliteracy Pathway Award is not regulated. There is no reporting to the state. It is given at the school's discretion at any point in a student's academic career up to and including 11th grade. It is based on criteria that is solely determined by the individual school. It can be used to recognize students for their achievement, effort, and or interest in improving their skills in English and another world language. So while the Seal of Biliteracy designation is awarded to the qualified student at the time of graduation, the Biliteracy Pathway Award provides a stepping stone to this highly distinguished achievement. The photos on the right represent a few ideas of how a school might recognize students at younger grade levels. The Biliteracy Pathway Awards are designed to support the learning of multiple languages starting in the younger grades. Schools have the autonomy to develop their own criteria for these awards, as well as how to celebrate their students' achievement. 
Examples of some student tasks to earn a Biliteracy Pathway Award could be, in second grade, students sing a song in the target language at a moving up ceremony. In fifth grade, students select their best work in one or more modes from English and a world language course, which could be displayed at a parent night at the end of the year. In eighth grade, students could write an essay in English on the importance of being bilingual and give some type of oral performance, such as a recitation of a poem or skit in the target language. These products can adorn the classroom, be performed or displayed for parents, and be featured in a newsletter or website. Examples of ways in which schools could celebrate students earning a Biliteracy Pathway Award might include a paper plate award, a certificate, and or a ribbon. Let's take some time to reflect on this year of planning for the Seal of Biliteracy and your participation in these modules. The Padlet activity highlighted here is used as an example of a way to obtain feedback from participants regarding their experience with this toolkit program. Please consider using the Padlet or some other means to jot down your thoughts and feedback and to share them with others. Consider the following. What might you do differently next year regarding tasks, time frame, deliverables, frequency of meetings, and monitoring student progress? What feedback do you have for us to improve these modules? What advice would you give to a school thinking about starting a CELA by Literacy program? We have now reached the end of the presentation of Module 7. Let's revisit our objectives for this module. Consider whether the CELA by Literacy Committee was able to accomplish all of the can-do statements included here. Please share any additional questions you may have. Further questions can be emailed to candace.black at nysa.gov or to your local Arborn representative. For more information on the SEAL, please contact us at candace.black at nysa.gov or via phone at 518-473-7505. We can also arrange for a virtual or in-person visit to a school to meet with your SEAL of Biliteracy Committee. New York City DOE schools should contact the Division of Multilingual Learners at dml at schools.nyc.gov. The OBEWL New York State Seal of Literacy website has a wealth of information on the seal and is easily accessible from this link or by visiting www.nysa.gov and typing seal of Literacy into the search bar. Every region of New York is serviced by one of eight regional bilingual education resource networks, or ARBURNS. These organizations can provide local support for a SEAL of Biliteracy program. The link for each ARBURN is listed below. New York State Language ARBURN statewide, Capital District ARBURN at Quest R3 BOCES, Hudson Valley ARBURN at SW BOCES, Long Island ARBURN at Eastern Suffolk BOCES, Mid-State Arburn at OCM BOCES, Midwest Arburn at Monroe to Orleans BOCES, New York City Arburn at Fordham University, and Arburn West at Erie 1 BOCES. Thank you for participating in this module. We hope this has been helpful. Please feel free to send any feedback on this module to the aforementioned email as we are always looking to improve the end user experience. The members of the Seal of Biliteracy Task Force listed on this slide were instrumental in contributing to and reviewing this toolkit. On behalf of the Office of Bilingual Education and World Languages of the New York State Education Department, the authors would like to thank them for their service.